Right, I'm Chris and I'm going to today show you how to use the oscilloscope and the function generator and then we're going to connect them together to uh, run the experiment. Right, starting with the oscilloscope basically the oscilloscope is really just a way of plotting a graph. You're familiar with a graph like this where you have a y direction and an x direction and the scope does exactly that um, it plots it plots a waveform on the screen normally we're not interested in the x direction as such we're using a value of time in the horizontal direction so how do we control the size that way and the size that way. Well, a waveform, if you remember, can be described by its re repetition rate, which is frequency in cycles per second, and that's normally written so many hertz, hz. Also, we have to describe the magnitude, the size, or normally it's called the amplitude, and here's one way of describing it, the peak value of the amplitude. We can see it's the value from zero line up to the peak. Quite often people will also refer to peak to peak, which is when you're measuring, well, in that case it's measured from the top of that peak to the bottom of that peak. And also a common way of doing it is to use RMS but we won't bother with that today. Now, to adjust the um, display, we've got a control for the vertical direction and a control for this one, which does time, if you remember. And they're both calibrated in 521, 521, 521 steps. In the case of the Y direction, it's calibrated in volts on the first range. So that's 5 volts, 2 volts, 1 volt, 0 0.5, 0 0.2, 0 0.1. And here we're going down to millivolts, or if we were very lucky, we'd have microvolts in this corner here. And we select the range we want with the knob here, click stops, round. Uh, what we do find is though there's an additional knob in the center and that gives an infinitely variable variation in the vertical direction. But normally we don't require that, so what we do is we click, we turn it until it clicks into the so-called calibrated position. And in that case, when it's in the calibrated position, it enables us to get a true reading from these values here, which we select with the click button. Right. What do these numbers refer to? Well, they refer to the actual steps, the square. Uh, you'll see that the screen has um, so-called graticule squares. So if I set it, say, to, if I set, set the click knob to, say, 1, that would mean that each square like that represented one volt and if we had a and to use that if we had a waveform of say three squares in height multiplied by one that's easily seen to be three volts peak to peak so making a measurement it's always the number of squares times the scale that you're on Okay. And the same thing applies in the horizontal direction, but now we're talking about time. The 5 to 1 steps again, 5 to 1, 5 to 1. So here we have 0.5 of a second per square in the horizontal direction, 0.2 of a second per square, and 0.1. Then we go on to 5 milliseconds, 2, 1. Here we're in point 0.2 and point 
milliseconds and down here microseconds. Again, you have an infinitely variable knob in the middle, make sure that that is set in the so-called calibrated position. We hardly ever use that middle knob, it's quite a confusing thing, it must be set. And the other confusing thing is that some models of scope, the calibrated position is pointing to the right. The commonest model of scope in this lab is such, but there's no convention, so some models have the actual setting over here on the left. Uh, usually you can feel the click when it clicks into the calibrated position. Uh, here is a reminder of the units we use. These are general units that you use in science, in science subjects and we use them in electronics of course as well. So, for instance, you should all know this, but it's a reminder. Micro, says, there's the Greek letter mu, which is one millionth, ten to the minus six. Milli, one thousandth, ten to the minus three. Nano, ten to the minus nine. And pico, ten to the minus twelve. Going up the other way, kilo, thousandths. 10 to the 3, and mega millions, 10 to the 6. Now we come on to the signal generator. And in this case, there's a digital dial in the middle there that shows you the actual frequency. And at the side, it shows you whether it's hertz, millihertz, or kilohertz. Make sure you get that right. Sometimes people have think they're generating 500 hertz and they're actually generating 500,000 or something like that. So make sure that's reading correctly. So that's a display of frequency and these are the controls to get that frequency. Again you have a fine control which is a rotary knob just below the dial and you've got buttons here down frequency and up frequency which allow for large steps in frequency. And also of course you have to select the particular waveform that you require which normally is either a sine, a triangle or a square. In this particular model there's just a single button, you keep pressing it. That's the button I suppose. That's really the illuminating lamp. There's a, new, there's a little LED against each waveform. And when you push this button, the appropriate LED, well, it steps through the LEDs. And you, in this, today we want a sine wave, so we keep pressing it until the sine wave button, the sine wave LED illuminates. So that's setting the frequency. And to set the amplitude, you have amplitude controls in this side of the generator. There's a rotary fine knob and again there's two buttons for course control. In fact these buttons make very large steps in the magnitude. It, it leaps up from a tiny little waveform to a huge value just by if you push one of those buttons or if you release one of those buttons, rather it leaps up and then push the other one and it leaps up even farther. So you can, you can either push them in and work with a very tiny few millivolts or have them right out and you'll get up to, I think, 20 volts or something like that, which is quite a large difference. Obviously we have to take the output from the signal generator and there are two output sockets. Make sure to get the right one. One of them is for um, logic signals marked TTL, which we don't often use unless we're doing a digital lab. Normally to get the sine wave or a triangle or whatever, we use the general purpose output, this one here. And um, so we'll go on to connect things together.
to actually do the experiment. So first of all, we check that our oscilloscope is set correctly, remembering to put the central buttons in the calibrated position. You should be able to find the little click position. So that's Y1, Y2, and time base. Another thing I had forgotten is actually that you can actually move the trace with the position control like this and place it where you want it to be. Make sure a lot of these buttons are not activated because you don't require a times five magnifier. Make sure it's out and you don't want a times ten magnification in the X direction. Make sure that's released. Also release these three buttons so that we've got not a dual display but a single display. Uh, check the X, Y is released as well. P students often leave that pressed in and external trigger. So most of the buttons really need to be out. I think that's true to say in this experiment that virtually all the buttons should be out and none of them in, okay, in the case of the oscilloscope. Right, having got that, we need to connect the signal from the generator to the scope and to the experimental box. So the proper way to do that is to use a three-way device like this, a T-piece, and uh, it goes together like that. And, um, pops onto the Y input and the scope. And let's try and get these untangled so you can see more clearly what's going on. Right. So this one is taking the signal from the generator, the correct output of the generator, not the TTL output, remember. Make sure that the sine wave is selected, as we said before. And we can see here that the signal is coming from the generator to the scope and is displayed on the scope. And then you can operate the controls of the generator, etc. We do then need the signal to continue from here onto the experimental box here. The other scope and generator will be set up virtually exactly the same. So it doesn't matter which goes to which input, but the other, other generator will come into that connection there. And finally, you will be, listen, you'll be plugging in headphones and listening to the two tones. And then we'll go over to the uh, complete setup. We can now see the complete setup. Uh, we've got the signal coming from this generator to one side of, it, of the box, a signal coming from the other generator to that side of the box. One signal comes through here to the phones on the left side and the other signal comes through on the right side. So we're displaying one tone there, one tone there. If we look at the experiment, we just start working through it now. Connect a sine tone of 500 hertz. So set the frequency to 500 hertz in the first, this is the initial first stage, 500 hertz. Okay, tweak it carefully. 500 hertz and it specifies three volts. So vary the amplitude. Using a square of one volt, one volt per square I set it to three squares, so that's three volts, peak to peak. Uh, 
500 hertz. The second one in the first case is 900 hertz. So I set that to 900 hertz. And then just follow the procedure. It's really a question of setting up the reference tone to the specified value. Specified frequency, specified amplitude. And then varying the second tone here. Okay. And adjusting it. Turning it down and turning it down until it just disappears, or apparently gets so quiet that you can't hear it against the other tone. And then it's a question of um, working through the experiment. Um, we, we started with the 500 hertz reference. In the second case we go to 1000 hertz on this side, and those one, two, three, four frequencies on the other side and then do it with the 4000 reference. And that's, that's it really. It's fairly simple if you follow the procedure carefully, it's really the connection there.